So, how to properly lean an airplane. We're at cruise, we're leveled off, and we're above 3,000 feet density altitude. We're actually at 1,800, but it's super hot in Florida today, so we're at more than 3,000 feet density altitude, so we want to lean out the airplane. So we actually get accurate fuel burn numbers, we don't burn excess fuel, we don't foul our plugs, all that great stuff. So how we're going to do this is we're not going to mess with power, we're not going to mess with airspeed, we're going to try to hold our altitude. Because if we're changing our airspeed, altitude, things like that, the RPM are going to change. If we're changing the power, RPM is going to change, and the temperatures of our EGT is going to change. So ultimately how we're going to do this is look at where the EGT is now. I'll go ahead and put my little red line so at least it's lined up with my eyes from over in the right seat, and I'll slowly move our mixture back. So just a quarter inch back, and then wait. This is kind of a long process, so it takes time. And we'll see that needle move a little, that white needle move a little to the right, lean it a little bit more, wait for it. If at any point this, during this process the engine starts to run a little rough, simply just go ahead and go back to full ridge. That should clean up any roughness. We see the white needle's moving a little bit more. Trouble here is the airplane may want to climb because you are getting more power out of the engine all of a sudden now, because it's running more efficiently. It's actually making more power with less fuel. We lean it out a little bit more. Again, we wait. We're looking both at the EGT and also over here at the tachometer. We don't want to see the tach fall off because obviously that's bad. The engine's starting to lose power because we've leaned it too much. And we're looking for peak, right? So we're going to keep moving our little red line here along with our white needle. And once we see that white needle fall back or we detect like a loss of power from the engine, a loss of RPM or some roughness, so the white needle's still climbing. I'm still pulling the mixture back. White needle's still climbing. I'm looking to get it to peak. There's a little bit of roughness out of the engine. I'll set my needle there. And that's peak EGT. So now I'm going to go 50 degrees rich of that. So I'm going to richen this back up until that white needle falls by 50 degrees. So two hash marks on this particular gauge. There's one. Again, we give it time. It takes a lot of time to change those exhaust gas temperatures. There's What'd you say, that's one and a half? Exactly that, yeah. Okay. Give it maybe a little richer, and that's 50 degrees rich of peak EGT. So we peaked, the EGT got as hot as possible, and then we richened the mixture to make it 50 degrees rich of. 50 degrees rich of means 50 degrees cooler on the EGT. So that's how we're going to fly this airplane all the way here to Las Vegas. And if we didn't, if we just kept it full rich, we would burn way more fuel, probably like 11 or 12 gallons an hour instead of like 8 or 9, and you'd run out of fuel a lot sooner than you expected to. Make sense? Perfect.